Hi folks, this is Mr. Panola with a little more information this week about how electrical energy travels from a power plant to our home. Now, if you haven't viewed the previous video already about how electrical energy, energy is actually generated in a power plant, you should go back and watch that first. If you have already, let's move forward. Listed on your screen are a number of different ways that electrical energy can be generated in power plants. We showed you in the last video an animation which demonstrates how water can be used to spin a turbine and thus generate electrical energy. You can also spin turbines attached to magnets and generate electrical energy by using wind or perhaps using steam from burning coal or steam from burning oil or natural gas or through nuclear reactions or solar energy or biomass or geothermal. These are just a number of ways that electrical energy can be generated. We have a varied energy generation uh, uh, table here in the US, and so all these are options that are available to us. Now, some are used more than others, which we'll discuss a little bit more later, but also notice that some of these ways of generating energy are bolded. Do you know what the bolded ways have in common? If you said that the bolded ways are the renewable energy resources, you're correct. These are energy resources that can be reused. For example, once you use water to spin a turbine and generate electrical energy, you can get that water back and you can use it again. But once you burn coal, the coal is gone. And so that's why a lot of these renewable energy resources are better for our planet. And there has been a large push lately to use these renewable resources because they perhaps will help our energy crisis by allowing us to constantly reuse methods as opposed to burning coal, which also could emit dangerous greenhouse gases at the same time. Now, let's take a look at the journey that electrical energy takes from a power plant, such as a hydroelectric power plant, like you see in the picture, or a nuclear power plant, which you see a picture of me visiting a number of years ago, to when it gets to our home. And so, what path does the energy take to get there? Well, let's start by taking a look at where this energy is first generated, at the generating plant. This could be a hydroelectric power plant, it could be a steam-powered plant operating on coal or natural gas, or perhaps it's, it's a plant that's using wind energy or solar energy. Any of those options from the first slide would work here. Once the electrical energy leaves the generating plant, it doesn't go very far. Well, ultimately it goes very far to get to our house. But the first thing it does is it travels to a very, very close by step up transformer. Now we're not talking about transformers that look like this. A step up transformer basically takes the voltage that the electrical energy has leaving the generating plant, which in this case is 11,000 volts. That's a pretty large amount of voltage but it's not large enough to send it efficiently across large distances. And so what happens is the step up transformer will increase the voltage so that the electrical energy can efficiently travel over long distances. But you have to compensate for this by decreasing the electric current. So the electric current might not travel very fast, but it travels with a large voltage, which is going to allow it to efficiently travel over these very large distances. And so the energy will be able to travel and less of it will be lost to other sources such as thermal energy or things like that. So when it leaves the generating plant, it doesn't go far. It goes to a very close by step up transformer, usually right on the property of the generating plant and its voltage is stepped up to allow, to allow it to be ready to travel far. Then the electrical energy travels across these high tension lines across large distances through our country. Maybe if you've traveled through some of the states in the middle of the country and you've seen large power lines on the side of the highways, this is electrical energy traveling from generating plants that could be multiple states away on its way to our homes. And these high tension lines have very high voltages. And that's because the electrical energy needs to travel at a high voltage to travel efficiency efficiently across those big distances. Now, I kind of shrunk this picture down. It is not necessarily to scale, 
But once the electrical energy travels across these large areas of our country through the high tension lines, then it arrives at a local substation. This would be perhaps uh, a local substation in Norwood owned by Norwood Light. And so what happens at this local substation is the electrical energy passes through another transformer. But now look what happens to the voltage. Now it goes from 240,000 volts to now 7,200 volts. The voltage has been decreased. What kind of transformer has it passed through now? You guessed it correctly if you said that it passes through a step-down transformer, which is cut off a little bit in my picture. But the step-down transformer will decrease the voltage now so that the electrical energy is safer to use in the home because now it's arrived at least in the town that it's going to be used. But we have to compensate for this. So the current goes back up. That doesn't mean that it's unsafe. It just means the voltage has been decreased and the current has to go up uh, to maintain a balance here. Now, once it passes through this local substation, then it travels through these local lines. These wooden poles are ones that you might see on the street in your neighborhood. However, it doesn't just travel from the local substation to your house. Before it actually gets to your house, it actually has to go through a second step-down transformer. These are these little boxes that you see on the telephone poles, uh, really the electrical poles outside your home, really on your street itself. So before the electrical energy can go from those wires on the street into your home, it's got to go through one of these step-down transformers in your direct neighborhood. At these small step-down transformers, now the voltage is decreased once again, even further, before it can go into your home. Now, as a result, the current goes up again to compensate. So it does come in with a pretty high current into your house, but the voltage is safe to use. So if the voltage leaving the local substation was 7,200 volts, that's the voltage when it enters this second step down transformer. But when it leaves this second step down transformer, the voltage is much safer. It's down to between 220, 240 volts. Now you might say, wait, 240 volts for my house. I thought we use 120 volts for those outlets. That's because there are really three wires. There's a um, negative 120, a zero, and a positive 120. And depending on how those wires are hooked up, which goes a little bit beyond the scope of this course, you can set up outlets that are 240 volts, such as the large outlets that you might plug your refrigerator or your stove or your washer and dryer into, or standard outlets that you might find in your bedroom or your living room, which are 120 volts. And so by getting the voltage down to 240, then the electrician can set up your home to have some outlets be at 240 and some outlets be at 120. But in general, this picture gives you a sense of how the electrical energy travels from the generating plant ultimately to your house.